Hello Stormwater Designers and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Hydrology Education videos. Today's video we're going to go over how to view the LID duration standard that is present in WWHM 2012, how it's different from the stream protection duration, uh, flow duration standard, and how to view that and set up a potential project. So let's open up this model, select a location on the map. We also have a free course covering WWHM 2012. There's 10 videos in this course. Like I said, it's 100% free and you can access it in the description box down below. Just tell us where to send the link. Anyways, let's get into this one here. So we're going to select a location on the map. Let's set up a very simple sample pre-developed scenario. There's two acres of forest flat on this site, connect it to the point of compliance and run the scenario. Now we're gonna explore some different mitigation options that we maybe have on this project site and how your standard option is not really gonna be good for the LID duration standard. Um, so let's say we added a basin. We said there was uh, one acre of impervious area, roads flat, and an acre of lawn on this site, for instance. And we decided to route that to a detention pond. But for some reason, our project needs to meet the LID duration standard, not to the standard flow duration. So I'm just going to set up a quick pond just for ex everyone's example here. This is not a modeled pond, for instance, and there's no infiltration. So if I run this scenario, we know that this is now going to generate a flow frequency curve that we can view in the analysis tab, but we're also gonna look at the LID duration standard. What is the LID duration standard? It is 8% of the two-year flow up to 50% of the two-year flow as opposed to the standard flow duration, which you can view here in view options. The standard flow duration is 50% of the two-year to the 50 years. So you can see that those are different, the different standards. So let's look at the stream protection duration. That is the default when we load point of compliance one, when we analyze it here. And we're gonna take a look and see if this facility meets storm protection duration. I'm not saying that it will, um, but this is an example facility that might be set up to meet stream protection duration. So it doesn't meet it, we'd have to change uh, the model there. But what if we looked at LID duration? So this will show the duration graph for that. So we will load, load that up here and we'll see if it meets that standard, which like I said, is 8% uh, of the two year to 50% of the two year. So a much more narrow range of uh, flows. And I'm going to flash a screenshot up of the uh, Western Washington Stormwater Design Manual that outlines that. So this is the, uh, that showed the stream protection duration again. Let's look at the LID duration for this facility. And so as the name implies, LID duration, we probably want to use an LID and we probably want, probably want to utilize some infiltration on site. So let's say that we were able to infiltrate. So you can see this fails here. We're not going to use this pond although it probably would have worked at some point for the flow duration, we're gonna use bioretention and we're gonna use it to meet our uh, LID duration standard. Let's say we have a different way of meeting that flow duration standard, or maybe we don't need to. Simple bioretention, under drain used. I'm gonna access quick swale. I'm gonna put in 100 by 100 facility, a case at factor of two, a third layer depth of one foot. And we do have some native infiltration. Let's say 0.3 inches per hour is what we're able to do on the site. So now that we're able to infiltrate some water, we're gonna have a much better chance of meeting that LID duration standard. Now there could be a wide variety of solutions. I'm not saying it's the only solution or best or correct solution. I'm just outlining what maybe affects that LID duration standard and how to potentially meet it. And having some infiltration on site is going to be very beneficial for you <laughs> to meet uh, that potential standard. So we're running the project now with this new bioretention facility. Let's go to the analysis tab now. And now let's let us look at the LID duration standard for point of compliance one. So now it's analyzing that pre-developed runoff versus the bioretention facility. And let's see how that affects the LID duration standard as opposed to remember we looked at the pond, it did not pass there. Although we were very confident we probably could get that pond uh, to pass stream protection duration. You can see the facility does pass the LID duration. So having infiltration is very helpful and proper facility design is going to help you meet that. So that is a quick overview of LID duration. If you have any questions, leave it in a comment down below. Remember, we have that free WWHM 2012 course in the description box if you want to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. Anyways, we will see you guys next time.